Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in May. I read some horror, some mystery thrillers and some true crime. And it's been an interesting month because I have ratings of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 stars. First up, I read a few books for Half Halloweenathon. This was hosted by the Restricted section. I will link that channel down below. And I read three books for that. I have done a separate wrap up video for that, so I'll link that down below as well if you want to check it out. But I read The Omen by David Seltzer. This I really enjoyed. I have seen the film before, which is brilliant. And I really enjoyed the book too and I gave it four stars out of five. Then I read Witch by Christopher Pike. This one is a 90s YA book and I gave it three stars out of five. And I read The Books of Blood Volume 1 by Clive Barker. This is a short story collection and overall I gave it four stars but there was one story in here in particular that I gave five stars and that was Pig Blood Blues. I thought that one was fantastic. Next up I read Faithful Place by Tana French. This is a mystery and it is the third book in the Dublin Murder Squad series. This is about Detective Frank Mackey who is in one or two of the previous books um, but in this book he is the main character and it follows a murder investigation that takes place in his home town, in the street where he grew up, and it involves an old girlfriend of his who he thought they were going to be running away to England together, but on the day they were supposed to go, she didn't turn up and she'd left him a note. So for all these years, he has been under the impression that she broke up with him and that she went to England without him but it turns out that she actually never left and she was murdered. I did listen to this one on audio and I did think the narrator was good. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy this one very much. It was definitely my least favourite so far in the series. I really enjoyed the first two, In the Woods and The Likeness. But this one was just a bit of a dud for me. I didn't find the story very interesting and I didn't really connect with it and by the end I just didn't really care what happened. Also, and I'm not going to spoil anything here, but fairly early on I guessed who probably did it, so when it turned out that I was right, it was just kind of a bit of a letdown. I, I just didn't feel there were many suspects and it was all a bit fairly obvious and I was hoping there was going to be more to the story than that, but unfortunately there wasn't. I think if you like family dramas this might interest you because it is very focused on Frank and his family who he is somewhat estranged from. So if it sounds interesting to you pick it up, it definitely has good reviews. Unfortunately it wasn't for me and I ended up giving it two stars. Then I read my five star book of the month. This is Geek Love by Catherine Dunn and it was absolutely amazing. This is about a carnival family and I will do a separate video all about this book just because I have a lot of thoughts about it and I just want to talk about it a little bit more but basically I thought this was absolutely incredible. It is such a fantastic read and I buddy read it with Emily at Page Turns. I will link her channel down below as well and we both had a really good experience with it. We both loved the book. So yeah, this was a hands down five star read for me. Then I went back to a bit more horror and I read The Grip of It by Jack Jemk. This is marketed as more of a literary horror and something of a haunted house tale and this was the pick for my horror book club this month and none of us really loved it unfortunately. It is about a couple who buy a house that is seemingly too good to be true and it's very cheap but they decide to go ahead with it anyway and of course there's something wrong with it, weird stuff starts happening. This one started off as really good for me. 
I was enjoying it, I was intrigued by the storyline and what was happening, but the more I got through the book, the things that I initially found intriguing just became the things that I found frustrating because it basically just felt like a series of strange incidents and nothing really tied it together, there was hardly any plot. This story is very open to interpretation and I think you can read into it as much or as little as you want. My problem was by the end of it I just didn't really care to read much into it. There were definitely elements that I liked about it and it is kind of part haunted house story and partly a focus on a relationship and how that relationship changes over time. Overall I just felt like there just wasn't much substance there. It was kind of just a bunch of ideas thrown at the reader and we're the ones that have to make something out of it. Um, it didn't feel like the author actually had um, an overall idea of what was going on here. This does have some great reviews so again if it sounds interesting to you then I'd still recommend checking it out and see what you think. You might have a different view of it than I did but I ended up giving it two stars. And now on to my least favourite book of the month. This was Social Creature by Tara Isabella Burton. I got a copy of this from NetGalley and it is about two 20-something girls in New York. One is from a poorer background and you know has three different jobs that she's juggling just to make ends meet and the other girl is incredibly wealthy and privileged and the two meet and form a friendship and many parties ensue and that's pretty much it. If you like reading about shallow, obnoxious people, this might be for you. I am just not a fan of that and I forced myself to get through a third of this book and by that point I just didn't see it getting any better so I DNF'd it. What I did read I gave one star to, I found it boring, you could see exactly where the story was going and I didn't feel carrying on with the book was going to be worth my time. This just wasn't for me. It was billed as Gone Girl meets Gossip Girl and I like both of those things so I was definitely intrigued by it to begin with but the story just didn't seem to be going anywhere interesting or original and the characters were not only unlikable but also just uninteresting so there just wasn't a reason here for me to keep reading. Then things did pick up with Birdman by Mo Hader. This is a crime thriller and it's the first in a series following Detective Inspector Jack Caffrey. This is set in London and I believe this one was published in 1999 so that's almost 20 years ago which is kind of insane and this is set around the Millennium Dome in Greenwich. Anyone from the UK would know what that is and it's now the O2 Centre. Not that that's very interesting but I just thought I'd mention it. And this is about some bodies of women that have been found near the site of the Millennium Dome and Caffrey is one of the people on the case. If you like forensics and pathology and that kind of thing then you will probably like this book because there's quite a bit of it in here. I found that really interesting. We do also hear from different characters throughout the book, so it's not all told from Caffrey's perspective. Again, I found that really interesting. There are definitely some twists and turns here, which kept me intrigued. It is pretty grim, and some of the details of what happens to these women is gruesome and horrific. So if that is something you don't want to read about, then give it a miss but it is well written and yeah I just really enjoyed it. I gave this one four stars out of five and I'd definitely like to continue with this series at some point. And lastly on to a bit of true crime with I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. 
This I listened to on audio and it is about the Golden State Killer who was a rapist, murderer, burglar in California in the 70s and he was never caught until very recently and unfortunately the author actually passed away a couple of years ago before finishing this book so some of it was kind of pieced together after that um, by I guess a team of editors. This was a very mixed book for me. Initially the first couple of chapters I thought were very well written, it was interesting, there was a lot of information there and I thought this is at least going to be a four star read for me, possibly a five star, but as it went on I just found it quite disjointed and confusing at times. It does jump over to different time periods, that's a bit all over the place. There are a lot of names here which is difficult to keep up with and remember who is who and related to what case. I feel like part of that may be because the book hadn't been finished before sadly Michelle McNamara passed away and I don't necessarily think it was the writing because I did think the writing was good but just something about the way it was presented felt a little bit scattered and kind of hard to digest. If you've read this let me know what you think. I have seen tons of great reviews for this so maybe I'm in the minority but overall I ended up giving this three stars. I thought it was good um, but for me it was just a little bit too all over the place to be kind of very coherent so yeah I have to say it was a bit of a disappointment. So that was everything I read this month. Definitely a bit of a mixed bag as you can tell but I had some really good ones in there so that's the main thing. Let me know if you've read any of these or what you've been reading in May. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!